Let's get the obvious out of the way. Alston and Brighton are two distinct neighborhoods within Boston proper. Here's the deal. Brighton was established as its own town in 1807, independent from Boston proper, and Alston was a neighborhood that was created within Brighton 61 years later in 1868. However, just six years later, in 1874, Brighton was annexed into Boston, but instead of Alston remaining a sub-neighborhood within Brighton, it became recognized as its own separate neighborhood within the city of Boston. Separate might not be the best word to use here. The two neighborhoods are like siblings. They're always referenced together. They share the same police district, community action group, and they're both on their own peninsula in relation to the rest of Boston proper. And these are just a few of the similarities. If I made a video for Alston and a video for Brighton, I would be wasting my time as a creator and wasting your time as a viewer because I'd be showing you the same content twice. The only time I hear these neighborhoods referred to on their own is when someone is being very specific about the location of their apartment or a restaurant or where something happened. For example, my place is in Brighton or the parade went through Alston. There are some differences, yes, but nothing worth making two videos, at least in my opinion. A quick hitter of some of the big differences, Alston is a bit more hipster, Brighton skews a little bit older, and Alston has a famous zip code. By the way, Brighton is 02133. Okay, all that being said, Alston Brighton is a phenomenal place to live, especially if you're a young professional. Data from Boston.gov backs up this claim as over half of both Alston and Brighton is between the ages of 20 and 34, which is far greater than the overall Boston average. And you see from this graph how Brighton does have a few more older residents than Boston. Alston Brighton has Boston U on one side and Boston College on the other, not to mention quite a few other hubs for higher education in the area. So the neighborhood is packed with people who are either in school or recently graduated. Obviously, a neighborhood wouldn't be able to cater to such a young crowd if it didn't have an assortment of establishments with reasonably priced alcohol. This results in a ton of great dive bars in Alston Brighton. In recent years, there's also some newer places to complement the old establishments, but thankfully, students are able to help these older bars pay the increasing rent. And living in this area, you sort of get a two-for-one on restaurants and bars because both Alston and Brighton have areas with high-quality places to eat and drink. So if you live in the middle of the two, you'll be a 10-minute walk in either direction for a good night out. Now, if you do live near students, they could be a rowdy bunch. That's kind of to be expected, and they definitely have that type of reputation in this area. It's not like a negative aspect of the neighborhood. I would just say it's something to be aware of if you like to go to sleep at 10 p.m. on Fridays. Something else to be aware of if you're looking for a lease in Alston Brighton, many older units have been leased out to students for a very long time. And if we all take a moment to think back to our college days and realize that students are willing to put up with a lot more deficiencies in an apartment than older individuals, and there might be landlords who like it that way. So if you see a great deal on rent in Alston Brighton, be sure to do your research on the condition of the unit. Additionally, since leases for students turn over on September 1st, it can be very hard to find apartments at other times of the year. The apartments are synced to lease when students arrive, so plan ahead if you're moving to the area outside of this window. The good news is that some of the newer complexes that have been built in recent years can make it easier to move outside of this window than in the past, but it's still a factor that exists. Also, the streets can be hectic if you move in around this time as well. Alston is known for its Alston Christmas, where departing students leave out items they don't need on the street for incoming students, and these are free. Another consideration of Alston Brighton is that it's decently geographically separated from the rest of the city. While it's awesome that the area has so many tea stops and the tea will get you where you wanna go, it will take you longer than if you lived in other parts of the city to get downtown. If you don't like commuting, but really want to live in Alston Brighton, Perhaps you could try to get a job somewhere in the Longwood Medical Area or at one of the universities close by. If you work at a tech job in Cambridge, I suppose you could bike to work since the tea would take forever, but the winter might throw a snowball in that plan. And now for the grocery situation, which I always like to point out with Boston neighborhoods. The good news is you won't have to think too much about groceries if you live in Alston Brighton. Wherever you live, you should be close to one of the two star markets or the Whole Foods market. When it comes to average rent in the area, you can expect to pay about $2,800 per month for a one bedroom apartment and $3,500 per month 
for a two bedroom apartment. It's perfectly normal to have roommates in Alston Brighton. It's part of the experience. So if you're just out of college, it's definitely worth giving it a try. So this concludes my brief overview of Alston Brighton. Please let me know in the comments if I missed any important aspects of the neighborhood or if you have any questions. Please like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to see similar videos.